From Washington, this is VOA News. Oil prices drop further after the OPEC cartel decides not to cut production. And a bomb blast in northeastern Nigeria kills more than 30 people. I'm Michael Lippin. The OPEC cartel has decided to keep oil production levels steady despite a huge oversupply of energy on the global market. Thursday's decision triggered a further decline in crude oil prices to their lowest levels in four years. Some poorer members of the 12-nation cartel had called for cutting production in order to boost oil prices. But those appeals were rejected by Saudi Arabia and other wealthy cartel members that have been able to withstand the weak oil prices. Oil prices have plunged about 30% since June, partly due to a surge in production of shale oil by the United States, which is not an OPEC member. Analysts say OPEC's wealthier members have argued that cutting their production now would result in them losing a further share of the North American market, where demand for OPEC oil has fallen sharply. Reports from Nigeria say a bomb has exploded on a road in the country's northeast, killing more than 30 people. Thursday's attack happened near the town of Mubi in Nigeria's Adamawa state. The Reuters news agency quotes witnesses and a security source as saying those killed include five Nigerian soldiers. Adamawa is one of the regions in which the Nigerian government has been battling Islamist militant group Boko Haram. The militants seized Mubi last month as part of their campaign to create an Islamic state in northeastern Nigeria. The army has since retaken that town. You're listening to VOA News. Afghanistan's Taliban militant group has claimed responsibility for two attacks in the capital, Kabul. In one of Thursday's incidents, insurgents raided a building that houses staff of the International Relief and Development Aid Agency. Earlier, a suicide bombing also struck a British embassy vehicle and killed five people. Ayaz Gul has more from neighboring Pakistan. Afghan officials reported late Thursday night that heavily armed men assaulted a compound of an international organization in the Wazir Akbar Khan diplomatic district. The Deputy Interior Minister Mohammad Ayub Salangi says a Nepalese guard was wounded in the exchange of fire. He says Afghan security forces killed two of the attackers. Salangi goes on to say that he has seen the guest house and everything is under control and the fighting is over. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the assault. The violence came hours after a suicide bomber attacked a vehicle belonging to the British Embassy and detonated the bomb. The British Embassy said a British security guard and an Afghan member of the Embassy staff were among the dead, but another British officer survived the attack. Ayaz Gul for VOA News, Islamabad. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei says he supports a move to extend nuclear negotiations with six world powers. In a speech broadcast on state television on Thursday, Khamenei said he does not oppose the seven-month extension for the same reason that he has not opposed the talks up to now. He said the United States has the most to lose if the negotiations fail. Syrian warplanes have carried out more airstrikes on Raqqa, the main Syrian city held by the Islamic State group. The Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says a number of civilians were killed and others were wounded in one of the strikes on a house belonging to a local judge. The monitoring group says other Syrian government attacks targeted schools, a hospital, and an Islamic State checkpoint. 
Ukraine's new parliament has held its first session since parliamentary elections last month when voters overwhelmingly backed pro-Western parties. On Thursday, about three-quarters of the deputies in the 450-seat body voted to keep Arseniy Yatsenyuk as the country's prime minister. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko and the parliament's newly formed five-party coalition favored Mr. Yatsenyuk remaining in the post for another term. A 40-year-old former lawyer and banker, Mr. Yatsenyuk was instrumental in negotiating a $27 billion loan for Ukraine from the International Monetary Fund, the European Union, and the World Bank. I'm Michael Lippin in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.